Western Vera Control. Behind me, my Vera Controlled Smart Home. I'm going to be using my Vera Controlled Smart Home to help introduce you to and orient you with our newest and most powerful user interface, or UI, UI7. This first video, the first in a series of many, is going to help introduce you to the dashboard. The dashboard is what you use to interact with your Vera Control system. It allows you to create scenes, add devices, pretty much do everything that you want to do with your Vera Control system. So let's dig in. Let's start on the left hand side of the page. Dashboard, devices, cameras, each of these buttons brings up a different screen and we'll go through each of these in more detail in just a little while. In the middle of the page are the cards, energy, how much you're spending per hour on electricity. In the middle it tells you if your devices are connected or not connected to your gateway properly and on the right hand side it tells you of any current alerts being transmitted by your system. In the middle are the modes and we're going to do a whole nother video on the modes but the modes allow you to set up your house into a particular way or mode by just pressing home, away, night, or vacation and it sets up lots of devices automatically. Then we have my shortcuts, the ability to turn all the lights on with one button press or to unlock all of the locks or lock all of the locks or turn off all of the lights with one button press. Then underneath that we have my favorites and we're going to scroll down here. You choose devices as favorites that you want to have quick and easy access to. For me, that's the thermostat and the lock on my front door. I'll show you in just a couple of minutes how we actually make a device a favorite. There are three different ways to look at your devices. By room, by type, and in a list. So to make something a favorite, you click on the star icon and when it's clicked, it will turn yellow. In order to get into a device's settings, we click on the right hand arrow. At the individual device screen, we can change the name of the device, what room it's assigned to, we can change settings, advanced options, device options, logs can come in really handy if you want to know what time somebody with like the door lock put their code in and unlock the door and then what scenes this device is assigned to or being used in. Next on our tour is our camera screens. Here we can look at either a small view or a large view and we can click on the individual camera in order to bring up the picture from that one. Scenes enable you to harness what might be the most powerful aspect of your Vera system, creating custom scenes that define what will happen when a specified trigger or event occurs. To add a scene, just click on the plus button that says add a scene. To edit a scene, you click on the pencil. To run a scene, you click on the arrow, and if you want to delete a scene, you just click on the trash can. So before I show you the things that make up a scene, let me actually relate a personal story to you about how a scene actually improved my marriage. Now you're probably thinking to yourself, this guy's crazy. How is a scene going to make his marriage better? Well, it's really simple. It's all about that light. When my wife gets home from work to a dark house, it upsets her. It's a safety issue. It's a security issue. The first scene that I set up with my Vera controller was to turn that light on 15 minutes before sunset every night. Now my wife doesn't complain to me, doesn't get upset with me that I forgot to turn on the front light. Now let's show you all the different things that make up a scene. The first step in setting up a scene is selecting a trigger. And the trigger could be, like I just talked about, 15 minutes before sunset, or it could be the turning on of a switch, it could be a motion sensor, it could be a door and window sensor. Almost any device in your Vera connected home can act as a trigger. Step number two is the action that we want to have happen. So in the scene I just talked about, 15 minutes before sunset is the trigger and the action is turning on the front light and two lights in the living room. Then the third part of a scene is this scene runs when I'm in what mode. If we want to associate a notification with it, either email or text, we can do that. And then we can also execute loop code, which is there for advanced users to create special functions with their Vera control system. And then the last step is to name the scene. To save the scene, we click on finish. The first step in conserving energy is knowing how you're using it. With the use of a home energy monitor, you can actually look at, in real time, the energy consumption of your home. With other devices, you can actually read the individual energy consumption of a device. Once you have the data, then Vera can generate reports for you comparing date ranges, yesterday versus today, last month versus this month, so you can look at your energy consumption and look at your behavior and see how you could be saving money, how you could be using energy more efficiently, and how you can reduce your carbon footprint. The settings buttons, not to sound, you know, silly, is where we control our settings. Things like changing room names, adding rooms, change our location, 
adjust our network settings, our backup settings, where we can look at logs, we can adjust our Z-Wave settings, and firmware is where we go to see if we're using the most up-to-date version of the Vera engine. And then lastly in the settings area is the setup wizard. If you purchased a Vera kit, this is the best place to start. All you have to do is click on setup wizard and click on next and it will walk you through the entire setup process knowing what devices that came in your kit. Apps are one thing that really separate Vera from the rest of our competition. As much as we would like to be able to deliver you every single feature and every single device that you could ever possibly conceive of, whether it's Z-Wave, network controlled, or using some other radio platform, at some point in time, we need to let our engineers and developers sleep. So what we did was developed our platform in a way that we left it open so that Vera users can actually develop apps or devices that they want to be able to control on their Vera system. To access these apps, we go to Install Apps, we type in what we're looking for, or we can just scroll through the apps until we find something that we find interesting. So if you have a television from, let's say, Samsung that's IP controllable, you can download the app, install it into your Vera controller, and then include that television on your Vera network and in your Vera scenes. The last area that we're going to talk about is user and account info. The first section is, well, account info. That's where we put our name, and our address and that's how Vera geolocates where you are so we know when sunset and sunrise is and so we can give you localized weather information. User info is where we designate whether we want to receive email or text notifications for alerts from our Vera system. Other users are users besides the main administrator and there's a number of different kinds of users that we can have. If we click on add user you'll see that we have three different user designations. Administrator, who can control anything on the Vera system. A guest, who can control the Vera system but cannot save any configuration changes. And then we can also have a user that is strictly for notification to send emails and text messages to. If you need help with your Vera system, there's a lot of different places that you can go to get tech support. The first place to go is support.getvera.com. If you can't find the answer to the problem that you're having there, the next thing to do is either email, call, or have an online chat with our tech support personnel. In the event that they can't walk you through fixing your issue, they'll ask you to enable tech support so that they can actually remote into your controller and help you resolve and fix the issue. And that's the dashboard for our newest and most powerful user interface, UI7. You can access that, by the way, from anywhere in the world through any web browser. Coming up in future videos, I'm going to show you how to add devices, how to add and set up scenes, and how to take advantage of the power and ease of modes. Now, if there's something that you'd like to see me talk about, email me.